9.52 a.m., June 6, 2024, still half mile north of Fairbank, Iowa on V68. This is a audio only for youtube.com forward slash at symbol I-A-M-W-A-D-E-H-E-I-N-E-M-A-N only. Should never be anywhere else other than my two YouTube channels, this one and youtube.com forward slash at Wade. Yes, my audio should only appear there. I've never streamed and I've never podcasted. As I posted on x.com forward slash WADES2ND last night, um, I only, uh, I'll narrate my life at home because I don't have anybody to talk to for seven years. So it's a way for me to keep my vocal skills working because I don't have anybody to talk to back and forth other than once in a while I visit with my parents as I did in recent days here. I went over and showed them a few rocks that I, uh, some more, more interesting rocks that I found and we just visited for about two hours. Um, and then indicated some, the frauds were staging lies over at the neighbor's because uh, when I took off there for my parents around 8 a.m. or 8 p.m., then went to the fields south of here or west of here between me and my parents, it's their field. I was looking for rocks out there, and the neighbors, there's something going on at the neighbors with an old pickup truck and another vehicle I noticed over there. But, um, there's nothing I can do about it when I know they're staging lies. You know, I'm not going to call, you know, the sheriff's department and say that because they'll be gone by the time they come out here and they obviously would lie anyway. So uh, I don't know what was going on over at the neighbors around between 8 and 9 p.m. or around 8 p.m. on um Oh, what night what was it? Two nights ago. I was here all day yesterday on the 5th in the mobile home other than feeding the cats outside. So whatever the frauds were doing as, as they drive by in their flurries of people, I don't know. But on the, uh, was it the 4th? It was on the 4th. I was in Fontana Park. And I do this 80% of the time when I come back from old wine now to try and find another way to relax. I've been doing it for years now to go over to Fontana Park because there's you can park in there and it's a good place for me to relax. But the frauds know I do that now. So every time I go over there, they'll, they'll anticipate I'm coming. Not every time that they're there, but um, because it seemed uh, the fourth was a significant time I was getting the truth out. Uh, I believe there was a teenage girl and another girl with her on the it'd be the the west side of the park across the river i go over there and i'll go to the end and turn around and sometimes i'll stay there for five minutes or a couple hours but because the frauds had broken into my car that night and switched a coral fossil one that was really crystallized um it was a crystallized coral and it had a lot of crystals all over it. One that I found out in the field here for one that looked like concrete. They had broken into my car and switched it. And I don't know if it's because the only reason I can see that they did it was because of surveillance. Cause they saw I had that crystallized one and they wanted to have it for, to prove that, you know, the surveillance was somebody else or whatever they were doing. That's the only reason I can figure they did it because it was the most distinctive rock that I had. And so I went to that turnaround on the west side and I got out to throw the, uh, throw that concrete one that they switched and put in my vehicle, the co concrete looking coral. I threw, chucked it into the river there at uh, Fontana Park, and they had these girls that I had noticed had, like, camping equipment or hiking equipment against the tree where I turned around there, and uh, I just noticed it was there. And I didn't stay because I just wanted to get that coral out of my vehicle because it wasn't mine, and I didn't want the frauds claiming I took theirs because mine was more valuable anyway. It's not that 
wasn't that valuable, I don't think, because it's just crystallized coral, but fossil. But um, so I chucked it into the river and then I got back in the car, turned around. And by the time I was going back out, they were running towards their stuff. So if they staged a lie, I, I, I said something to him. I said, don't tell any lies that I stole any of your stuff because I didn't. I said something like that to him as I drove out of the park. And then I went over to my parents um, at some point that evening, like around 5 p.m. to around 8. I was at my parents and half that time or an hour of that time or so, I was chipping the rocks to identify the ones that I had picked up in the field. And some of them that I had had in the rock wall here that I made in 2008, 2009, some of them are from that time. So I try to identify what they are. I still haven't identified any of the rocks definitively because I haven't been into, um, I've never been into identifying rocks. I took a course that had a lab about identifying rocks, as I said, and I never finished the course in the 1990s. It may have been the lab for physical geography, which I believe it was, but you know, physical geography has a lot of components to it, tectonic plates and mountains and rivers and soils and all kinds of stuff that uh, that covers. So it doesn't cover rock identification unless you're in that lab. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't cover it thoroughly unless you're in that lab. And I didn't finish the lab, so I didn't you know, I didn't get all the way through the rock identification and then I haven't done it since that time. As my mom said, she, you know, she took a course in it um, a long time ago too in her 20s and she couldn't, you know, remember anything about much about the rock classifications either. So that's what happens. It's like a language if you don't use it. Plus, I never finished that part of it anyway. So I'm just learning um, and I'm getting, you know, better at understanding it. And then it's kind of like you, it gets down to like two possibilities usually of what the rock is. It's, it's a, you know, something that's either it's something that's not valuable versus something that could be, or it's two different things that aren't valuable. That's kind of what it comes down to with most rocks, you know, that you, that's why, you know, not everybody is going out and doing it because not, you know, the chances are the rocks aren't going to be that valuable and you have to have knowledge of what, what is valuable before you, you know, know what to pick up. So it's not, that's not the, the only, you know, the main reason is that I want to identify the rocks because this is a glacial till area. So everything from Hudson Bay could have been driven down here by glaciers and my theory is my theory is what's driving me to learn more my theory that the gulf of mexico and then hudson bay which are this very similar type of craters back force craters by my theories um are the reason driving this and the fact that i live in the glacial till zone from what that back force crater from the hudson bay would have created with the glacial till um so it's a very interesting thing for me to figure out what all the different types of rocks there are. And there could be, you know, significant um, discoveries from that. And some of the nice that I found is really ancient, uh, which is which is a formation of rock that is formed under intense pressure like mountain building. Um, so it might possibly have been the Canadian Shield or... Um, you know, the, the only way something like that gets here is that there was the glaciers pushed it from some really intense, um, pressures and whether that could have been done under the glaciers, probably not because the glaciers are in motion kind of, and it would have, see, that's, that's where it gets into me thinking that the, the, uh, the back force like blew out some of this stuff or it actually came, some of the nice actually came from the meteor itself possibly. So, you know, that's the more I learn on that, the more the picture will come into clear view. People that have been, 
you know, ge the geologists that have been looking around this area for years would, you know, have a better uh, understanding of why some of the things were here. And, and I could discuss that with them if, if I had an opportunity, but I don't, I don't know of any, I mean, I know of one guy, one of my professors that I could uh, possibly have a conversation with, but um, I haven't done that yet. So that's the reason I'm identifying rocks at this point. And I'm still here half mile north of Fairbank, Iowa on V68. It's always been me and all my photos, and it's me taking all of the photos of my x.com forwards, my x.com accounts, YouTube accounts, and Twitter accounts. All the way back to 2017, it's always been me taking photos. I think my mother may have taken one photo on the steps of their um, red and white barn home for me initially, and then I started taking selfies for my identification of myself and that's the only reason i take photos is to identify myself with my social media so that when i go out in public people know who i am and they can associate me with my social media accounts but in the in that between that time there's been guys in their 20s pretending to be photos of me when i look younger when i'm leaning in or when i'm during the summer when i lose weight and look more tan um and toward the fall, when I've lost that weight, that's typically when I look the thinnest and the youngest is after summer and in the fall. And then they're trying to claim that it's their photo. So they've confused everybody with that. And then I have to try and battle that because, you know, if I stop taking those photos, then they'll claim it wasn't me. And if I keep taking the photos, they'll try to keep pretending that it was them. It's always just been me taking my own photos. I have like two and a half foot arms, longer arms than the typical person, especially for someone that's six foot one. My arms are, you know, a, the, the length of a, someone that's like six, four, six, five. And that's not lying. My, the same thing with my hands. My hands are typical of someone that's six, five or six, six, at least. And that's the truth. I can palm a basketball. I mean, I can put a basketball, a, a full-size man, man's men's basketball. I'm a man, and put it in my hand, and it, I can palm it and hold it uh, upside down in the air without it falling out of my hand. That's how big my hands are, 10.7 inches. Um, that's why I stress 10.7 inch hands because I have 10.7 inch hands. I'm 73 inches tall, green eyes, not blue. 52 years old, born 11, 471, circumcised 1971. No changes since. And I do have both testicles. It was, in, you know, it's every little thing that I don't state in my posts sometimes. Then they'll say, I don't have two testicles yet, or I have one testicle, or I don't have any. I still have both my testicles. I am a man. Penis, testicles, eight to nine inches erect three to six inches when it's not erect and when it's three inches it's being affected by you know chemicals whatever is and chemicals are in the air or oxygen depletion or or the stress or you know uh, it's one thing or another uh, but it's kind of like when you're in a shower and they shrink up but you know sometimes the, you know having PTSD like I do and that combined with something else like dehydration or whatever it is will cause it to be three inches instead of four or five inches when it's not erect. And then as the male penis is, it gets longer when it gets erect and mine is eight to nine inches when it's erect. You know, it, that's just the way it is. I'm not a dog. And that's, I mean, and I know that's not why people call me a dog. They're claiming that I'm not paying my bills or whatever. Uh, I had an issue with trying to pay my one online bill or one online payment this this month already. It wouldn't let me pay it, and so I and I haven't done it in the last few days because I forgot because I normally pay it on the first or second. So I got to do that, but. Um, and I haven't gotten to the bank to get cash to pay my mother for uh, utilities past two months. But she said, it's okay as if, if I wait till I get to the bank to pay her. So I just haven't gotten to the bank to get cash for that. So 
Um, I haven't done anything wrong. Anything that they claim is just stage lies. I vent my anger at home and my language is bad, And I, but I'm only using that as a defense mechanism, as a frustration venting against frauds, liars, and thieves, whether they're males, females. Those are the only people I'm directing that to. You know, they're trying to claim that some of the language, they want to take, you know, they want to take part of my PTSD venting and claim that I'm biased against women or against uh, black people or against uh, Mexican people. They want to take parts of my PTSD venting while I'm at home by myself and try and claim that I'm biased against one group or another. I'm just venting the anger and frustration at indicated people that are defrauding me. But these groups want to, you know, want to focus on those, on the single parts of what I'm doing so they can steal my lifetime of work, which is very abusive and torturous for someone that spent their blood, sweat, and tears uh, forming that. And that's my life savings when I'm in my 50s now. And when you're in your 40s and 50s, that's when you're supposed to be saving money. I can't do that because these criminals trying to make me look like I'm biased after being having PTSD for 10 years while they stage lies that I'm gay or whatever to exacerbate my PTSD. And then they want to like justify stealing my lifetime of savings my lifetime of work by claiming that i'm biased against women or or minorities so they torture me into uh ptsd and then venting my frustrations while i have ptsd and then justify stealing my lifetime of work to give to a criminal fraud who happens to be a female or a uh, black person or Mexican person because I'm venting my frustrations at home with PTSD. That's how torturous my life is. Signing off June 6, 2024 at 10 a.m., 10.09 a.m. in the mobile home half mile north of Fairbank, Iowa on V68 Wade Allen Heineman, born 11471.